Hello! Today I'm going to experiment a little because science is everything. So here we go. It's an old machine somewhere from 2006 or 7. I don't really remember. It was my old production machine. I was mixing albums uh, on it uh, up until 2012, I guess. You know, it's what I always do with all the computers, all the workstations. When I get a new workstation, then my previous workstation becomes a gaming machine. So, under the hood, it sports a red MSI motherboard. It's a K9A2CF. It was built around an AMD 790X chipset. It supported AM2 and AM2 Plus. Uh, suck it, suck it, what a word. You know, Semperons, Athlons, and Phenoms. Now I start to realize that they sound like subatomic particles. Anyway, this machine has a Phenom X3. It's a triple core 2.1. I mean gigahertz. It has 4 gigabytes of random access memory, or oh, whatever, of unknown origin. It was not a top cat around the time, but uh, it was still uh, quite uh, nice and powerful. And five or six years ago, it became obsolete. I put it in a rack and I kept it as a backup machine if something goes wrong with my production machine. So it was turned off for years. But recently I dug it up because the BIOS chip on my Asus motherboard that I use for gaming fried again. So just for fun I took this old 2006 or 7 machine and slapped in my present GPU. That's a 2020 Zephyr Radeon RX 570. This modern GPU is an absolute overkill for this machine. So it's 2006 or 7 technology and the only new components are the GPU and a hard drive containing my Steam games. So let's turn it on and see what happens. So moment of truth. Let's turn it on. No sign of fire. That's good news. And uh, okay, I don't smell anything fishy. So let's power on. It spins up, man, it works. Wow. <laughs> I'm happy, and still, there's no smoke, you know. It's, it's great. And it boots up. Man, I'm honestly surprised. I haven't seen this scream for five, six years. Oh, old friend. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we are good so far. <laughs> and it's on. Man. And it's so that it's a Windows 7. Man. <laughs> it's great. So after a boring run of installing drivers and setting up and tweaking stuff, here we are. A 2007 machine with a 2020 GPU. Sorry for the tilt image. It runs in 1080p. And when I started OBS Studio, I guess because of the slow machine, then the recording became pretty, you know, stuttery. So instead I just uh, use my camera. It's not the prettiest thing I can imagine, but I can capture my tests without uh, serious frame drops. So here we are. I think it's pointless to demonstrate in depth that uh, this machine is capable of running Reaper, and mixing albums and things like that because I used it as a workstation back in time and it works perfectly and with a GPU of 1 gigabyte of RAM it was capable of editing 720p videos so instead I will torture it with more recent games back in time when I used it as my gaming machine it was capable of running Fallout 3 and maybe New Vegas Skyrim, Mass Effect 
Death Space, Dirt Rally or GTA 4. But don't think of something fancy. It was just 720p and medium settings in most of games. You know, because of my profession, I always invested money in audio interfaces, sound cards and studio gear. On GPUs, not so much. Okay, our first test will be Fallout 4 from 2015. So by the time this game came out, this machine had already rested in the box for two or three years. And it works! I have no idea about the FPS, but it works. Okay, and it's 60 FPS. No, 60 FPS for the intro. It's not too sluggish. Okay, here I have a cut in the video because this thing loaded for one and a half minute. <laughs> and it works. And what? 30 FPS. Look at this. <laughs> it seems to work fine. Well, it will not win a beauty contest, but this game is quite functional. And these frame rates from a 2007 machine in 1080p, it's quite remarkable, I think. Indoors, it can jump even higher, up to 50 FPS. Wow. This game is quite enjoyable, even in low settings, because of the consistent frame rates and this cool VATS aiming system that slows down the time. The next test was Witcher 3, and I noticed that uh, it had the same way very long loading time, and I guess it's because of the slow and small memory modules of uh, this old machine. You know, 4 gigabytes, it's not much, it should be enough, but uh, these memory modules are very slow. It's, uh, I guess, 667 megahertz module so it's not the fastest can imagine during gameplay it's more or less playable but not too enjoyable because of the low frame rates if you do missions only on the countryside with Geralt I think it's uh, maybe even playable because the frame rates are about uh, 20 and 30 FPS not great not terrible but in the cities hmm this game turns into a slideshow, and the 2020 Radeon GPU just cannot help it. To my biggest surprise, the game ran best in the highest resolution, 1080p. Whenever I tried to lower it a little, then the game started to slow down, so it's strange. And the other thing that makes Witcher 3 not so playable with this very slow machine is a strange uh, hiccup. That the machine makes during fight scenes one two three four five and you go just like a turn-based strategy game you have time to you know think about your tactics and everything oh uh, well witcher 3 is a too demanding game for this very slow machine my next test subject was xcom 2 from 2016 and on the paper this game is an overkill for this old 2007 machine well I started the game and I went out to have a drink and you know just relax a little and when I returned it still loaded so I didn't have any hope that it will start at all and bang after nearly two minutes of loading time it's in the system and 
I think it's quite playable. It's nothing fancy, everything is on low settings, but in 1080p, for a 2007 machine, 25 frames per second on an average is quite nice, I think, especially without hiccups. It's true that it's not especially beautiful, but it looks quite fine even in low settings, I think, and this game is absolutely playable, so I'm quite surprised. And don't be fooled by the blurry image and this bucket sound coming from my camera. In the reality, it's quite okay, especially for a 2007 machine. So, after a game where frame rates are not so important, I tested something where frame rates are everything. And this is Assetto Corsa. So, 1080p, and not even on the lowest setting, it pumps out 60 FPS on an average. I don't know, man, this game must be extremely well optimized. It is stunning, even if this is the oldest game I tested this uh, old setup with. It's from 2014, I think. Still, it's 7 years younger than this PC. So, even if the GPU has the power, the PC has not. So, 60 FPS from a 2007 machine is face melting, I think. Bravo, ragazzi! So then, GTA 5, a 7 years old classic that was released on PC only in 2015. And it seems to me that this game works on this old PC with 1080p resolution. With uh, 25 FPS average on low setting, it is absolutely playable. Besides, I don't think Trevor himself gives a shit on low setting or high FPS, so it's fine. And during the recording of this video, I realized how I appreciate Farm Sim. You know, this peaceful green lands, they bring peace to my soul. So, after realizing that the youngest game in my test was uh, from 2016, now I have XCOM Chimera Squad from 2020. It's a close sibling of XCOM 2. They have different table game rules, but still they share the same engine and the same basic concept. So, I suspected that Chimera Squad will just perform exactly the same as XCOM 2. But to my biggest surprise, this game runs slightly better than XCOM 2. On an average, it's about 10 FPS faster, something about 35. I think the main reason behind it is the smaller playfield. XCOM 2 has to move a bigger outdoor environment, but Chimera Squad is indoors. Anyway, it was a surprise of the day to me, because it's 2020, 13 years younger than this old PC. Still running fine on Windows 7. I think it's quite remarkable. So, some conclusion. Well, well sort of. Thing 1. It is completely pointless to add uh, such a powerful GPU to such an old machine. I think the weakest link is the RAM. The maximum memory that this board can accept is 8 GB. It's not that bad on the paper, but in the practice 13 years passed and by today these old DDR2 modules they are way too slow. For gaming at least. These old machines just fall behind in performance so they will never be able to extract the true power of these new GPUs. So if you have an old PC like this and you wish to upgrade it with the new components, then base level GPUs will be just better match. It's pretty easy to choose because you have the green team and the red team. So Nvidia's GT series and Radeon HD series will do the job just fine. Thing 2. This machine performed remarkable, I think. 
especially that it wasn't used for many years. I just turned it on and it started. It's pretty nice for a 13 years old machine. For everyday use it's quite capable. And back in time it was an audio workstation, so if I just reattach the recording gear it is ready to mix an album. Thing 3. It is absolutely capable as a gaming machine. You just have to choose wisely. All seems to be about these AAA very high demanding games. But if you don't need 1 zillion FPS and in 20k resolution, you can find an ample of games that were designed quite economic, considering the power that they need. So I think fun titles just like FTL or Starbound will run happily on this 2007 MSI motherboard plus Phenom X3 CPU plus 4GB of slow DDR2 RAM machine.